If you have a financial services complaint, who are you going to call? Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics, World's latest post covering finance and problem news with a distinctively Australian flavour. There is a very important entity which exists in Australia called AFCA, the Australian Financial Complaints Authority, which is effectively the external dispute resolution scheme for consumers who are unable to resolve complaints with member financial services organisations. A not-for-profit company, limited by guarantee, that is governed by a board of directors, which includes equal numbers of industry and consumer representatives. And so, if you are going to take a financial services complaint beyond the financial services organisation itself, then AFCA is who you're going to call, or actually, more likely, who you're going to access online. Today, I'm joined by Robert Elfin. Hi there. Oh, hello, Martin. How are you? Great. Thanks very much for coming on the show. And uh, you sent me a message the other day saying, I want to talk to you about AFCA, right, which is the <laughs> ombudsman, effectively, for the financial services sector. Now, very interested in having this conversation because, of course, it's regarded as a critical element now. And um, let's start with just a little bit about yourself, because this is more a sort of a, an observation from a professional point of view rather than just a personal point of view, isn't it? Yeah, correct. Um yeah, so just a bit about myself. Um, so my background um, is, or educational background is banking and finance. Um, in Germany, I did my degree in banking and finance. I migrated to um, LA, South Australia in 2009 um, and started my career in real estate and probably uh, got exposed to market stress, which yeah, I'm obviously following your um, shows and it's uh, really appreciate your data which really confirms what i've seen over the last nine years or so mm -hmm. um yeah so the, over the years i've dealt with a number of different people going through that process um where they fall behind on a mortgage um and then yeah the process that follows from there um and uh yeah afka has been um uh, an organization i turned to for a lot of help and trying to negotiate with banks uh, via uh, the ombudsman, which has been helpful for sure. Yeah. Okay. Now, AFCA, of course, has um, enhanced powers from where it, where it used to have, right? Mm -hmm. um, and the idea is that it can help in individual circumstances with individual households where, if they get into difficult and have a complaint, right? They can't look at the sort of structural stuff like an ASIC or an APRA can do, but they can look at individual cases. Um, and I guess my first question then is, um, you know, what is the process of engagement like with them? What's your sense? Are they able to, do they engage? Are they able to engage or are there limitations and barriers? Uh, yeah, so they, they certainly engage. It's, it's a free service to the customer. Um, and uh, oftentimes what happens from my experience, um, a customer would, if they have an issue, would turn to the bank and oftentimes um, yeah, get into a bit of a barrier there in terms of help and assistance. Um, and uh, turning to, to Africa, they've got a structured process. You pretty much can lodge a uh, complaint for free. And the complaint then goes to Africa and is being sent to, to the bank um, for uh, review. And I think they have 21 days to respond to that. Um, um, the bank is encouraged to resolve the dispute um, directly with the customer or the the customer's representative and um, if that's not um, possible or, or, or doesn't really work and um, then AFCA steps in um, and um, there might be a process of uh, having a conciliation call with the bank and the customer just to explore what the issue is and what's the point of view and um, then there's uh, oftentimes the process of information uh, seeking information or exchanging information so um, AFCA representative AFCA would ask the complainant and the bank for information and it's a bit of an information exchange and from there uh, um, AFCA will then make a recommendation um, and if that recommendation is still not acceptable by the party as a resolution of the case um, it will then go to the ombudsman for a determination which then is a final decision from the ombudsman um, and there's really no um, no appeal to that. Um, that's the final decision from the ombudsman to close the, the case and resolve. 
Mm. Yeah. So the ombudsman decision is effectively final, right? Uh, that that yeah. uh, and, and both parties essentially have to accept it. Uh, but that is after the initial discussion with AFCA, right? So effectively there's a bit of right. iteration, um, try and reach some sort of agreement, and if not, then it goes to the ombudsman. That's the process, right? Yeah. How, long, how long does that process tend to take? Uh, it can take a fair while. In my experience, um, probably the longest cases I had was probably over 12 months. Um, yeah, it can be a very long process, um, right. if going all the way down to the determination stage. Right, yeah, and uh, there's a little bit of a, it depends to it, but obviously um, if they're going to get a lot of information and a lot of um, uh, toing and froing between the two, two sides, it can be quite, quite a long time. Um, how many, how many um, cases do you think, well, perhaps you don't know, but uh, I'd just be interested in your opinion, um, how many cases get rejected by AFCA, you know, when people sort of rock up and say, I've got this problem, and they say, no, you haven't, and sort of flip them away again. Any sense of that? Um, I don't think there's many that get rejected. Um, what I've, I've uh, seen in the past is uh, if someone lodges a complaint, the uh, complaint gets closer, resolved, and then uh, the customer comes back lodging the same complaint, um, <laughs> then AFCA, yeah, or a very similar complaint after then says, look, we failed yeah. with this and we were closing it. But yeah. um, every complaint from my experience gets taken serious um, here to start with. Mm. Well, that's good to know. And um, my understanding is that, um, you know, the, the, the sort of the overall process would be that somebody has a an issue to do with their financial services mm -hmm. organisation. Step one would be to try and resolve it with that organisation direct, right? right? Go through the internal complaints process with inside uh, the, the, the company. Uh, they actually are now obliged to say as part of that process that if you're not happy with the resolution within the company, then you can go to AFCA, right? And then you mm -hmm. put the application into AFCA. It's a relatively simple process, as you say. Uh, they then review it and then go through that process that you've mentioned uh, with, with, a, with a point of resolution. Now, there's a couple of interesting observations. One is there has to be a point of contention, so it has to be a complaint. In other words, something has to have gone wrong, yeah. right? Uh, and then secondly, the bank or the other financial services organisation has not resolved it first pass, right? So that's mm -hmm. sort of the, the process. So so that's the way that it, that it works. Um What's your sense in terms of the uh, you know range of issues? You mentioned mortgage stress. So is, are a lot of the issues that you touch relating specifically to missold mortgages and those sorts of things, or you know, are yeah. there a range of different things that you see? Uh, so the complaints I've dealt with, um, the majority of them financial distress. So um, the borrower falling behind on their mortgages. Um, to, yeah, definitely stuck. Don't know where to go. Um, so I, I often have yeah came in in that area um, to go down the after process to try to resolve it um, with the with the aim of reaching a resolution agreement. Um, mm. Yeah. Uh, and, and and banks want to try and you know reach agreement. Obviously, it's you know despite what people may think, but sometimes it does come down to who said what, when, what evidence is there. You know, is there material in writing that you can turn to? Uh, and what's your experience there? It, it, um, are, are we sometimes in a situation where it is he says, she says, and there isn't anything documented to um, take the conversation forward? Uh, yeah, so uh, oftentimes the cases I come across, so when I sit down with, with a customer, um, they're disappointed, and the bank pretty much oftentimes, uh, in terms of internal uh, dispute resolution, denied um, any kind of resolution. Um, then taking it up uh, with Afka, the outcome very, very different. Um, yeah. Yeah, okay, right. So, so the, it does actually give you an extra, um, you know, step that you can take. And, uh, you know, certainly the feedback that I get from people who've been through the process is it can be a bit long, a bit winded, it can be a bit complicated, but actually quite often it will come out with a better resolution than the financial services organisation would have offered initially, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and it's also worth making the point that, that those financial services companies have to pay, don't they, when, when an application goes into AFCA? Yeah, so the, the yeah the member banks uh, they pay and it's free service to the customer. Obviously, the question there is: is there a bit of conflict of interest um, if the banks pay for it and yeah, it's free to the customer? Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, but but it is a free service to to, to a customer's point of view, Correct. right? Yeah. Uh, and so you know, what would you rate them in terms of their ability to be able to actually get to a resolution? I mean. It sounds to me as though you're reasonably comfortable with the process and uh, the outcomes. Uh, yeah, so um, 
I, I would rate uh, them definitely a very helpful service um, to, um, to, to the customer. Um, in terms of outcomes, um, they are limited um, and I would say limited loss to the bank. There's obviously, yeah, if something gone wrong, um, especially in the spa in a place, a space of a responsible lending, there's compensation, but it's very limited on the, on the bank, I have to say. Um, yeah. And that's a really important point, right? Because there's a big debate at the moment about whether the standard responsible lending obligations, which basically come from, from ASIC, um, are going to be removed. And of course, the argument is, well, they'll be replaced by the AFCA process, which we've gone through. But the mm. point is that the responsible lending obligations that are currently in existence are much broader and wider and more policy driven. So that means essentially that uh, ASIC can look above individual cases to try and actually get to root cause analysis and potentially guide, um, you know, alternatives to the to the guidance. Whereas the AFCA stuff is really specific to an individual client once something has gone wrong. So they are absolutely chalk and cheese, aren't they, in terms of different approaches to dealing with issues? Yeah, correct. And I, I personally think yeah, the responsible lending obligations, uh, they're crucial. And uh, my personal view is that they should not be taken out and should not change because that's really the last resort the customer has. Because um, it's not really a... a um, um, an equal relationship between the bank um, and the customer in the first place. Um, so I think they're crucially important and they should remain, um, if not enhanced, that's my personal view. <laughs> well, you're certainly singing on the same hymn sheet as me on that one, because, and, and by the way, Choice and uh, another of, a number of other of uh, the consumer groups are all saying, uh, you know, whatever the government may say, and, you know, they've sort of tackled this uh, in terms of uh, economic recovery and et cetera, et cetera, and lending to SME, they're sort of almost throwing every argument they can. But the fundamental yeah. point is that we are losing a critical layer of protection which exists today because essentially Absolutely. it puts all of the pressure back on individuals and basically the the banks have you know some obligation now with regard to how they lend and what they lend post the uh, removal of these uh, uh, rules if they were to be removed and it comes back to the senate in in, in june later in the month um, it means that, that essentially it's down to the individual borrower and if basically the borrower represents to the bank and the bank takes that and then makes a loan and it's not appropriate or in, you know it doesn't work right all of that goes back onto the individual borrower. There is no protection, right? Yeah, and that's a big, yeah. big change. Yeah, and it's very unfair um, because oftentimes the customer, um, well, they are not really aware of, of, of the obligation in the first place and um, might not know exactly what they're setting themselves up for. Yeah, and that's the point. You make the point exactly right. The unequal balance between, you know, the power and knowledge of a large financial organisation and and an individual, and that's why we need we need appropriate protection. So, I mean, I think Africa's, you know, good. I'm not saying it shouldn't exist, and it's got a very mm -hmm. important place in terms of the resolution of individual specific problems post those problems arising but it's not the same as the responsible lending and i just remind everybody um what the royal commission showed a couple of years ago right in just how many loans were actually missold and how many times people were you know deceived directly or indirectly to uh, end up with loans that weren't appropriate for them and that was with the responsible lending obligations in place so imagine what it would be like without them so it's a pretty critical um thing and by the way i believe that there is a bit of a majority emerging in the senate to um uh, block those um rules coming back so let's uh, keep our fingers and, to and toes crossed on that one yeah, um, fi final point on on africa um is this a process that can be done online or do you have to actually turn up physically or um can be done with documents how does the process uh, actually work no online uh, very simple there's a um, online um, platform you yeah you pretty much put in your your details and it gets sent to africa and then forward to the bank um, um yeah no a very simple process uh, right and, and that's worth i think highlighting to people because sometimes people i think you know feel a little bit um overwhelmed by the process of making an official complaint right but yeah you know i'd underscore what you just said it's a very simple process it's an electronic form um the questions they ask are i think rel relatively simple and relevant right and so if you don't get satisfaction from raising an issue with your particular financial services organization it could be lending or it could be um you know other things to do with financial services right and then you've got the that, that important path 
um, complete the um, the process there, and then basically it throws the ball back into Africa's court. And as you explain the process, then they actually take it forward. So, so folks, the message I think from this conversation today is there is this very important safety net. And in the current environment, uh, given the fact that we've got very high levels of debt, we've got um, many households struggling from a financial perspective, um, you know, the, the fact that this exists is really important. And um, I'd encourage people to, uh, to check it out if they've got an issue. We'll put the links below to, to Africa. And, uh, um, you know, I appreciate your time today in terms of highlight highlighting this. Is there anything else that you'd want to add uh, for people to be aware of? Um, the, yeah, well, yeah, um, I, I would uh, definitely uh, say a similar thing. So it's a free service and I would encourage anyone um, to make use of it, um, whether the issues are minor or, or big issues, because um, it, it really sets up a process where you get to speak to the right kind of people within the organization and get answers um, directly. And if they can't be resolved, you have a third party there you can um, uh, turn to. Um, so I think, yeah, it's an uh, important um, uh, process. And uh, I'll, yeah, I would definitely uh, encourage anyone to make use of it. Terrific. Well, I thank you for your time today. Thanks very much mm -hmm. for bringing that to our attention. And uh, I appreciate uh, your sharing your thoughts with us. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks, Martin. Thank you very much. Take care. So there you have it, a very important conversation. And if you have an issue with a particular financial services company that is governed by the scheme, try to get to resolved with them first. But if not, then you can go to Africa. The process is simple, straightforward. And in fact, their resolution services are pretty good. So worth storing away for future reference. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.